So for those of you who are familiar with similar concepts in wired networks, at a high level what we do is essentially do weighted fair queuing, except that we use time rather than bits as the measure for this fair queuing. So what I'm going to describe to you is a relatively simplified version for you know, easy understanding, which is based on round robin rather than weighted fair queuing. So I'm going to erase all of this and then start afresh. So the idea here is that I have two stations. So I have an access point. I have two stations. Each of these stations has a packet queue. right? In this particular case, I'm thinking downlink. I'm going to talk about downlink and uplink shortly. And packets are coming into these queues. Let's say station 1 is at 1 megabit per second. Station 2 is at 300 megabits per second, just to sort of take the two extreme cases. right? So what we are going to do now, associated with each of these stations, is create a token bucket. So this is a separate token bucket. Right. And this token bucket allocates tokens in terms of time. And just as in a you know, bank account, you can only withdraw cash if you have the cash in your account. You can only transmit a frame if you have enough time credits in your token bucket. So each station is being given a number of credits on a periodic basis, the tokens. And in order to transmit a frame, you need to have that many tokens. So notice that any time a frame is transmitted at 1 megabit per second, it consumes 300 times as many tokens as a frame that's transmitting at 300 megabits per second. And since we are giving equal number of tokens to all of these stations, logically what will happen is after you take you know, your transmission with 1 megabit per second, for you to gain back the same number of tokens, the other device would have transmitted 300 times the packets. So the idea is if you are able to do scheduling based on some virtualized resource, in this case airtime tokens, you are able to provide airtime fairness or resource fairness which is normalized on the basis of packets. Now, if it turns out that a station has nothing to send, it gets no tokens. So it's a use it or lose it policy. So notice that it is not the same as doing time slicing, where you might end up wasting airtime. If it turns out station 2 has nothing to send, in other words, if its packet queue were empty, these tokens are cleared out. Now, in addition to doing downlink, you can use exactly the same abstraction in order to deal with uplink fairness. Because obviously this is a shared medium where both downlink and uplink are transmitting. So what we do is whether you end up, these tokens are on a per station basis, device basis, and whether you end up transmitting for that device or receiving for that device, we will consume the tokens. And whether your device, your transmission is successful or failed, we will take away the tokens for the particular amount of airtime or data rate used. So notice that we normalize across transmit plus receive, we normalize across success plus failures. So using the scheme, even if you have a highly error prone link here and a clean link here, the error prone link will not impact the clean link. If you have a lot of downlink transmission on one side and uplink on the other, that is also normalized. So we are able to provide fairness on a per link basis, uplink and downlink. So that's the first key aspect of airtime fairness or predictability. Now I want to introduce one other concept, which is uplink and downlink fairness. So notice that the first, sort of, just to recap then, the, the first thing we talked about was packet level versus airtime fairness. The second thing that we've talked about is station level fairness, so that you can have different stations at different rates using different technologies. The third thing we are going to introduce is this concept of uplink and downlink fairness. Now you have one access point. You might have, in this case I drew two, but obviously you might have 20 devices. And in typically dense environments like you know, um, a lecture hall or in a library and similar you know, conference rooms, things like that, you might have a large number of devices served by a single access point. From a radio perspective, notice there's only one downlink radio, but there are many uplink radios. In this particular case, you know, if you end up drawing 20 of these devices, there's going to be 20 radios contending for uplink transmission, but only one radio contending for downlink transmission. Now, if you do absolutely nothing, if you do a laissez-faire approach where every radio essentially uses the same contention parameters, notice each of these devices will effectively get one over 21 of the channel. There are 20 uplink devices, 
and one downlink devices. Total of 21 contenders for a shared medium, therefore each of them gets 1 over 21. But in terms of the transmission, what happens? Most of the transmission is either downlink or uplink. In fact, all of the transmission is either downlink or uplink. Most of the transmission, in fact, is downlink. So notice that if you look at it in terms of flows rather than devices, you have 20 downlink flows and 20 uplink flows. So you don't have just 21 contenders, you have 40 contending flows. And out here you have only one downlink contender competing against 20, 20 uplink contenders, but here you have 20 downlink contenders competing against 20 uplink contenders. So the point I want to make is, we should not, in terms of fairness, be thinking about an access point as just one radio. We should really be thinking about it as 20 co-located, personalized or virtualized access points. And that's exactly what we do. So we think of this access point as having 20 virtualized endpoints, each of which is serving its own corresponding device. And then we come up with contention parameters, downlink and uplink, and adjust the scheduling so that not only do we provide fairness across stations, we provide fairness between downlink and uplink. We think of it as 40 devices contending, out of which anytime any of these 20 virtualized devices gets the channel, the access point gets to transmit downlink. That allows us to get the third dimension, which is to make sure that as client density increases, uplink does not totally take over the downlink. And if you notice, this is one of the key areas where Meru differentiates itself from everybody else. Because with almost every other vendor, you will find that as the number of devices starts to increase beyond 15 to 20, the network craters. This is exactly the reason why. Because uplink starts to kill downlink. But with Meru, because we know how to scale, uplink never ever kills downlink, and there is fair channel access on all three dimensions. Thank you.